We begin in Baghdad, where thousands of people are attending the funeral procession for those killed in the US airstrikes targeting Major General Qasem Soleimani on Friday. The formal funeral for the top Iranian commander, as well as Abu Mahdi al mohandis the deputy commander of the Iran-backed Popular Mobilization Forces, is underway. Mohandis will later be buried in Najaf in Iraq. Soleimani's body will be flown to Iran. Well, let's go live to Simona Fulton, who's in Baghdad. Simona, so this is a chance for people to pay their respects. That's correct, and that's what they've been uh, doing since the early morning hours. Uh, the processions began here in Baghdad, uh, in uh, the Kadumiya area, where uh, the Holy Shrine of Imam Qadum is located. And uh, the procession is now underway, and part of it has reached uh, the area uh, opposite of the fortified green zone, uh, where the U.S. Embassy is located. Now, um, earlier today, we saw, um, actually just about an, a half an hour ago, we saw the crowds actually reaching up to the, one of the gates of the Green Zone. Now, the, the procession that included the bodies uh, of the eight people who were killed in the strike, including Soleimani's and Mohandas, uh, they were allowed to go through. But then uh, when the broader crowd allowed, the security forces basically uh, locked the gates and did not allow these crowds to go through, which is a significant uh, departure from what happened on Tuesday when security forces basically stood down and allowed uh, mourning crowds of uh, supporters and members of the Popular Mobilization Forces to enter the Green Zone. Uh, the crowds uh, for a few minutes banged on the gates. They demanded to be let through, but then the entire convoy basically diverted to take another bridge to the other side of the river where uh, these, uh, this funeral procession is supposed to gather. We're seeing uh, a, a, perhaps a broader participation in this funeral procession today compared uh, to Tuesday and Wednesday when uh, basically it was uh, almost exclusively crowds of popular mobilization forces. We're seeing uh, senior officials, both from the government and the security forces, including Prime Minister Adel Abdel Mahdi, uh, march among the crowds. And the question remains whether these crowds will remain peaceful. For now, it looks that the crowd is pretty mellow. They're gathering uh, in this area that is called uh, Jadria, and it remains to be seen whether security forces will continue uh, to prevent their entry into the green zone, uh, to prevent them from marching on the U.S. Embassy. And Simona, Parliament's expected to meet uh, tomorrow, right? That is correct. In the wake of uh, the strike that killed Soleimani and Mohandis, uh, there have been mounting calls for uh, the removal of foreign troops from Iraq, whether it's uh, through political or military means. And Prime Minister Adel Abdel Mahdi himself called for an emergency session in Parliament uh, to basically uh, discuss this matter. Now, it appears that there is broad support in Parliament, both from the pro-Iranian uh, uh, alliance, which is basically consisting of the political wings of the Popular Mobilization Forces, as well as another bloc that is led by Shiite cleric Muqtada Sadr. Both of them appear to be so, uh, supporting legislation that will basically see the departure of foreign troops, including U.S. troops, from Iraq. But it's still unclear for the moment how exactly uh, the procedure would unfold. Usually we would have to have uh, a bill coming from the executive office to initiate such a step. Uh, but uh, some legal experts are also telling us that uh, it is possible that the, the parliament will uh, simply vote to basically annul the agreement that currently exists between uh, Iraq and America. But there is also a question whether, uh, if the parliament indeed votes, whether this is something that can uh, actually be implemented, given that the government is currently a caretaker government, uh, or whether we would have to wait for the nomination of the new prime minister. So there are a lot of question marks. Uh, but one thing remains certain, that there is overwhelming support in parliament to actually see the departure of foreign troops from Iraq. Simona Fulton there, live with the very latest from Baghdad. Simona, thank you. A spokesman for the Iranian Armed Forces has just issued a statement saying Iran has the right to respond to the assassination of Soleimani and our response will be strong. If there is a war in the region, the cause is the United States of America. Iran will avoid any hasty response, but it will retaliate for the assassination of Soleimani. Any U.S. move after the Iranian response will face a more robust action. Well, Qatar's foreign minister is heading to the Iranian capital for talks as the Gulf state urges all parties to exercise restraint.
Let's talk to Dorsa Jabari, who joins us live now from Tehran. Hi there, Dorsa. So a day on from these killings happening, uh, what is the mood? What's the feeling in Tehran? Well, uh, things are quite tense at the moment. There is a plethora of diplomatic activity, and uh, I think a lot of uh, regional countries are quite worried about what Iran might do in response, and rightfully so. The Qatari foreign minister, as you mentioned, is on his way to Tehran. He will be meeting his Iranian counterpart, Mohammad Javad Zarif. We have heard from sources uh, within the foreign ministry uh, who have been speaking to uh, various other media outlets that they say that there is a message that is being possibly carried by the Qatari foreign minister from the United States for Iran. This is a very, very critical time. I think there's a lot of uh, worry that Iran might react quite quickly and harshly to what the United States has done. And rightfully so. The assassination of Qasem Soleimani is not an ordinary assassination. And the Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, uh, this morning has been meeting the family members of the assassinated general in the capital, Tehran. Let's hear some of what he had to say. The Americans do not realize what a big mistake they've made. They will see the consequences of their mistake, not only today, but in the years to come. This great man deserved not to be killed by an ordinary person or terrorist, but to be martyred by the history's biggest terrorist. When this general is martyred, the whole U.S. Army is put on alert in the entire region. And Dorsus, tell us more about the funeral arrangements that are going to be taking place in Iran over the coming days. Well, we're officially uh, into three days of national mourning in the country, and we understand that the body of uh, this assassinated general will be coming to Iran at some point on Sunday. It will be going to the holy city of Mashhad, where people can pay their respects to him. And then it will travel to the capital, Tehran, where the supreme leader himself will be performing a prayer service over the body at Tehran University. And then finally, on Tuesday, Qasem Soleimani's body will go back to his hometown of Kerman in central Iran. Iran, where he will be laid to rest. That was his own wishes to be buried there. Uh, we are expecting millions to gather in the coming days to pay their respects to this man, who was not only just a military commander, as we heard from the president himself, he was much more than that. And Iranians are still in shock. But they are expecting their country to respond quite strongly to what the United States has done in the near future. Dorsa Jabari there, joining us live from Tehran. Dorsa, thank you.